Welcome back, my friends. I'm Nancy, this is Mandy, and we welcome you back to The Chosen's Blended Harmony of the Gospels. We are on day 24, part two, dinner at a Pharisee's house. Dinner at a Pharisee's house. We are looking at Luke 14. On Sabbath, when he went in to eat at the house of one of the leading Pharisees, they were watching him closely. There in front of him was a man whose body was swollen with fluid. In response, Jesus asked the law experts and the Pharisees, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath or not? Here we go again, more Sabbath healing. But they kept silent. He took the man, healed him, and sent him away. And to them he said, which of you whose son or ox falls into a well will not immediately pull him out on the Sabbath? They could find no answer to these things. He told a parable to those who were invited when he noticed how they would choose the best places for themselves. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, don't sit in the place of honor because a more distinguished person than you may have been invited by your host. The one who invited both of you may come and say to you, give your place to this man, and then in humiliation, you will proceed to take the lowest place. That wouldn't be a very good situation, would it? But when you are invited, go and sit in the lowest place so that when the one who invited you comes, he will say to you, friend, move up higher. You will then be honored in the presence of all the other guests. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and the one who humbles himself will be exalted. He also said to the one who had invited him, when you give a lunch or a dinner, don't invite your friends, your brothers and sisters, your relatives or your rich neighbors, because they might invite you back and you would be repaid. On the contrary, when you host a banquet, invite those who are poor, maimed, lame, or blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. When one of those who reclined at the table with him heard these things, he said to him, Blessed is the man who will eat bread in the kingdom of God. Then he told him, A man was giving a large banquet and invited many. At the time of the banquet, he sent his servant to tell those who were invited, Come, because everything is now ready. But without exception, they all began to make excuses. The first one said to him, I have bought a field, and I must go and see it. I ask you to excuse me. Another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I'm going to try them out. I ask you to excuse me. Another said, I just got married, and therefore I'm unable to come. So the servant came back and reported these things to his master. Then in anger, the master of the house told the servant, Go quickly into the streets and alleys of the city and bring in here the poor, maimed, blind, and lame. Master, the servant said, What you ordered has been done, and there's still room. Then the master told the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges and make them come in so that my house may be filled. For I tell you, not one of those people who were invited will enjoy my banquet. First of all, it's amazing Jesus even went to eat at a Pharisee's house, right? He wasn't afraid to mingle with anybody. He would go to a tax collector's house or a Pharisee's because Jesus loved everyone. So he's at the house, and of course they're going to ask him questions, trying to trap him, right? There's a man there whose body was swollen with fluid, and in response, Jesus asked the law experts and the Pharisees, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath or not? He's asking them now, right? But they kept silent. He took the man, healed him, and sent him away. Then he gives the example about if you had a son or an ox that fell in the well, wouldn't you pull him out immediately? But they could find no answer to these things, so they're just going to kind of lay low there. So then he goes on and tells a parable because he was noticing how they would always choose the best places for themselves. And I love this. Basically, when you are invited somewhere, don't sit in the place of honor because a more distinguished person than you may have been invited by the host. And so then when you come, if you've put yourself in the front row, they're like, uh, excuse me, like these people are more important than you, so you have to move back a couple rows. And that would be embarrassing. He's like, just come and sit at the last place. And then if the host wants to move you up, he will. And that's just an honorable way to be. Then he also says, when you give a lunch or dinner, don't invite your friends or brothers or sisters or relatives because they might invite you back. Then you will be repaid. On the contrary, when you host a banquet, invite those who are poor, maimed, lame, or blind. Then you will be blessed because they cannot repay you, but you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. 
And that is a good thing, right? We should be doing things for people who can't repay us. Because if you do something for your friend and then you, you know, you say invite them to a ball game and then you expect them to invite you like to the blues hockey game or something back, then are you really doing anything? I mean, you're just kind of doing, you know, favor for favor. What really pleases God is when we do things for people who cannot even pay us back, when there's no way you know they would ever pay, pay you back. That is really showing God's grace to people. And that reminds me of Acts 20. I'm going to read this verse. Acts 20, we'll start at 34. You know yourself that these hands of mine has supplied my own needs and the needs of my companions. In everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak, remembering the words the Lord Jesus himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And it is more blessed to give than receive. I mean, when you give, don't you just feel so good? I do. I mean, it's just really more fun to go around blessing people than just having your hand out expecting people to, you know, wait on you and serve you. So remember, it is more blessed to give than receive. And then he shares another story with them. I love it. A man was giving a large banquet and invited many. And at the time of the banquet, he sent his servant to tell those who were invited, come because everything is now ready. So I had to kind of look this up because that seems weird. You send your servant out. Wouldn't people know? But you would tell people way in advance the day, but the time really was never set because you had to get the preparations and you weren't sure when you would have all the food ready. So when the food and everything was ready, then they sent the servants out to say, come. So the servants running around town, inviting everyone who was already invited, telling them that now is the time, come on to the banquet. So you think that would be a great thing, but all these excuses pop up. Without exception, they all began to make excuses. The first one said to him, I've bought a field. I must go out and see it. I ask you to excuse me. Another one said, I have bought five yoke of oxen and I'm going to try them out. I ask you to excuse me. Okay, now these two are about money and I don't know if I would ever put money in front of my friend's invitation, right? That just seems kind of rude and pretty shallow, but also like you bought the oxen and you haven't really tried them out. I mean, that doesn't seem like a very smart person anyway. I think if I would have bought these, I would have already tried them out. And the same thing with the field. I want to go look it over. You can look the field over tomorrow. So these first two, I don't agree with these at all. They're all just about money and putting themselves first. But the other person says, I just got married and therefore I'm unable to come. So that one, I'm kind of thinking, well, if I just got married, I don't know if I would go. But what Jesus is saying here is that we shouldn't even put our family first before Jesus. God and Jesus need to be number one in our lives and our family actually needs to come underneath them. So I think that's why he gave that example. And then so the servant comes back and reports all these things to the master. And in anger, the master told the servant, go out quickly in the streets and the alleys of the city and bring in the poor and the maimed and the blind and the lame. And the servant goes out and he does it. And he comes back and he says, master, I have done what you said. And guess what? There's still room. So the master says, go into the highways and the hedges and make them come in. So my house may be filled. For I tell you, not one of those people who were invited will enjoy my banquet. And this is just kind of also a preview of, you know, heaven at the end of time. God sends out the invitation to everyone. Some people are too busy, right? I'm too busy to go to church. I hear that from people all the time. I'm too busy, you know, working myself up that corporate ladder. I'm trying to get this business going or whatever. And yes, it's good to take care of your family and to raise money you know, for your family and extended family or whatever. But when you're putting all of that before God, that is not right. And that's what he's saying. We shouldn't have money or any of those excuses like that in front of our time with God. So if you haven't been back to church yet, my friend, get back to church. You know, we have all kinds of excuses for things. But, you know, when it comes to someone invites you to say a baseball game or something really big like that, suddenly we have time and can clear our schedule. But sometimes for God, we put other things, you know, in front of him. So at the end of the age, it's not going to matter. You know, if you've been so busy always here with your job and never had time to go to church and don't know Jesus, that's not going to be an excuse. So I tell you today, Get out your Bible, keep watching these devotionals, and get to know Jesus as your King and your Savior, because He is calling you. So I hope from this you remember, don't take the highest seat, right? You want to be humble and sit in a lower spot, and then you may be elevated up. And also, don't just do nice things for people that can do things back for you. Go do something for someone who could never repay you. Find what he's saying in there that would equal the lame and the blind. Help find someone who really needs some help and go help them because it is more blessed to give than receive. And then finally, you know, at the end, he's going to be looking around and some people will say, well, I'm busy over here in my field. I'm busy with my business or whatever. But you want to make sure you keep Jesus number one in your life and put your faith and trust in him. So at the end of time, when the big banquet comes, you are ready and you are there. Have a great day thinking about all those things. And we'll see you back here tomorrow for more Harmony of the Gospel. Yes.
You can get your own copy of A Blended Harmony of the Gospels by The Chosen simply by going to thechosengifts.com. There you can find all kinds of wonderful merchandise to help build your faith this year. Be sure to check out their devotionals and their Bible studies. Have a blessed day.